Welcome. In this video for Salesforce admins, you'll learn how to set up forecasting. Salesforce forecasting helps businesses predict future sales, guiding key decisions like budgeting and stock ordering. With integrated insights and analytics, you'll get a clear view of your sales pipeline and potential earnings. Best of all, it's customizable and included with Sales Cloud at no extra cost, so it's an efficient and scalable alternative to spreadsheet forecasting or third-party tools. We'll cover the basics of forecasting setup in this video, but there are more features and optional settings to explore. For all the details, check out our collaborative forecast implementation guide. This guide is updated for any new releases, so you can always see the latest details. It talks through objects to ensure they are set up before you begin, permissions, and more. These steps are usually done by Salesforce admins with input from sales leaders. First, let's enable forecasts. From Setup, enter Forecasts in the Quick Find box and select Forecast Settings. If Collaborative Forecast isn't already set to active, toggle it on. Activating Forecasts enables forecasting features and creates your first default forecast type. Let's talk more about forecast types and introduce forecast hierarchies, two building blocks of forecasting in Salesforce. Forecast types classify different sales scenarios, like new business deals or contract renewals. The default type that appears when you enable forecasts is called Opportunity Revenue, and forecasts using the amount field on the opportunity object based on the close date. When setting up a forecast type, you specify at least these five parameters, object, measure, date type, filters, and hierarchy. Forecast hierarchies are the structure that decides who sees what sales data. Let's look closer at that parameter. In the Setup menu, select Forecasts Hierarchy. The Forecasts Hierarchy determines how forecasts roll up within the organization and who can view and adjust them. For example, sales managers are usually permitted to see and change more forecasts than sales reps. Set up your role-based forecast hierarchy here. If you use Enterprise Territory Management, you can set up territory hierarchy separately there. This role-based forecast hierarchy is set up based on your role hierarchy. If your role hierarchy is correct, then your role-based forecast hierarchy you see here will align with it. If it doesn't align, update your role hierarchy and then check back here until it looks correct. You may also need to add or edit managers, sales reps, or other users in the forecast hierarchy. This is really important. Because if a role in the forecast hierarchy has no forecast manager, that role and all its subordinate roles aren't included in your forecasts. Here, I'll click Edit Manager and select Elliot Smith as a manager and click Save. Also, define the individual contributors so that their forecasts will roll up to each higher level. Take the time to add specific managers and other users here to make sure they're included in forecasts. Once we've confirmed our forecast hierarchy and added managers and other users, let's create a new forecast type. Click Create a Forecast Type, and let's follow the setup flow to define those five parameters and more. In this example, let's create a forecast type to measure the quantity of delivery for opportunity line items or products. We'll also look at some of the other things you can configure to tailor forecasting for your needs. Click Start, and this time we'll choose Opportunity Product as our object. Click Next, and we'll see the next parameter, Measure. The dropdown here is populated based on fields on the object we chose a moment earlier. So we're seeing fields from the Opportunity Product object, and that includes custom fields, custom measure forecasts. Let you forecast based on any custom currency or number field here, as long as that field is on the object. Let's choose Quantity as the measure in this example. Notice the checkbox where you can opt to group forecasts by family. If your company groups its products and services into families and wants to forecast based on those families, use a product family forecast type. We recommend completing the product family field on each product record. Next, let's select a date type. Let's use the date field as the date type for forecast calculations. The ability to use a custom date is great if you forecast by manufacture date or someday other than the close date. Next is the hierarchy parameter we explored earlier. I'll choose user role as the hierarchy. This next section allows you to add optional filters. Notice that you can filter by record type and more. So you could have one forecast based on opportunities for new business and another based on renewals forecasts. We'll leave filters blank in this example and click next. I'll name this forecast type product quantity to reflect the object and measure we chose. Click Next to confirm your selections, then click Save.
Customize the fields you'd like to show as columns on the forecast page. Talk to your top sales reps about what they want in this view. For now, we'll add a column for next step in addition to the standard fields. Click Next and Done. Click Activate. And now your new forecast type is available for your sales team to use in their forecasting activities. Notice that you can have up to four active forecast types. File a support ticket if you need more than four. Let's explore these additional settings. If your company groups its products and services into families, choose which ones to display in specific forecast types. Check out this in-app description for Manage Product Family Groupings, and you can find more detail on each of these settings on help.salesforce.com. Enable adjustments and judgments. Tick these two adjustment boxes so that both managers and sales reps can adjust forecasts based on their predictions of what's likely to close. Tick the manager judgments box so managers can indicate if an opportunity should be included in the forecast based on their insight on whether it will actually close. We recommend ticking all three boxes unless there are specific company policies or strategies that discourage adjustments or judgments from either managers or sales reps. Manage forecast rollups lets you choose to show one or more forecast categories per column. We'll keep it at cumulative forecast rollups. Otherwise, the default forecast will show separate columns for each forecast category, closed, commit, best case, and pipeline. Many users prefer to see combined opportunities across multiple categories. Note that you can also update category names. More on that in our article called Customize Forecast Categories. Choose a default date range, either monthly or quarterly. If you use multiple currencies, select a default currency. Users can change it in their own display settings if needed. Last, if your team uses quotas, tick the box to show quotas, so users can track and view quota attainment in forecasts. Add a forecast tab and make it visible to the relevant apps and users. Quick instructions for this step are in the implementation guide. Now, let's explore the end user perspective in the forecast module. This is what sales reps, sales managers, and others will see. Access the module from your sales app's navigation bar. Click on amounts to see the opportunities that make up the forecast. Use the tabs to change the forecast type. Use the search feature to find specific users. If you want someone else to see your forecast, click the share button and choose who can see or edit it. Adjust your personal forecast ranges in the set forecast range option. Use the forecast changes chart and historical trends with visualizations by product family or other forecast groups and with added data summary tables. We recommend sales leaders schedule a weekly forecast review to analyze and adjust forecasts based on their knowledge of sales teams and the current sales landscape. It's important to analyze your forecast for accuracy and trends over time. This helps your organization with everything from planning team training to defining business strategy. Sales managers use forecasting for more than just predicting sales revenue. Creative managers also use forecasting to track sales reps' win rates. Spot and mitigate potential challenges ahead of time. Spur friendly competition to motivate sales teams, define quotas, and monitor quota attainment. Good luck with your forecasting. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.